boys club, it's about like four fraggle looking dudes who smoke weed and play video games and eat pizza. I didn't even know what a meme was. A meme is an idea that spreads from mind to mind through society. When you put art out into the world, people can take it and interpret it any way they want. The white supremacist movement has taken over the meme, Pepe the Frog. Couldn't be recognized as the guy that made this shitty meme. <laughs> so it's like my worst nightmare. Memetics, it's a slightly weird world that you get into. It's uh, Pepe's become kind of a symbol. He's unique, you know, there's no other meme like this. I'm gonna chop your little froggy head off like this. How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, uh, my name is Matt Fury, as was just mentioned, and uh, I'm the creator of Pepe the Frog. Uh, he's gotten some, uh, gotten into some weird situations lately, and uh, you know, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my uh, my story with uh, dealing with that. Um, so. Pepe is like, he's a really personal character to me uh, as I created him. He's, he's uh, one of four characters in a comic book called Boys Club. And, uh, you know, he's just like a stoned frog dude that likes to uh, hang out, eat snacks, and like fart with his buddies. And, uh, you know, I kind of relate to him. I, in fact, I kind of feel like, uh, kind of feel like how this picture looks right now. Kind of chill, but ex totally exposed. Uh, <laughs> I'm not like I'm not used to doing like talking to lots of people, but uh, feel good about it. Um, so the thing about Pepe is like it, uh, I was just talking to one of the Andes backstage, and, and we were mentioning that like you know he he says it's like Pepe is kind of a meme. He was a meme within a meme, so he was like a meme before he was another kind of meme. Um, so uh, these are a couple of examples of just like Pepe is just a random internet meme. Um, uh, yeah, one of them is, I guess, sniffing panties. I don't know. And the other one is uh, a goth chick. Um, I can relate to both of them on some level, I guess. But uh, <laughs> uh, so I, you know, I didn't. I thought it was kind of a cool thing. Like, hey, Pepe was a meme. You know, it was like this happened for like almost a decade. Uh, before the whole uh, controversy happened uh, during the election when like, uh, you know, Donald Trump shared a Pepe meme where it was like Pepe as Trump or whatever and then all the Nazi stuff and Hillary Clinton put out an explainer saying that Pepe was a, was a, was a symbol of the alt-right, which it kind of was and uh, it was uh, very strange. Like I was used to it being like an internet thing, uh, but the whole political thing uh, really didn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, so, uh, you know, Pepe got put on to this like list of hate symbols, and uh, you know, I understand why. But it also, um, I, I tried to combat this uh, by by doing something positive, and uh, I uh, you, you reached out to all of. Not all of them, but you know, friends from the art community, and was like, "Hey, let's like do a Save Pepe campaign." And like, I got to like reach out to all these uh, creators and uh, illustrators and stuff to to uh, do like positive Pepe memes with him, just like chilling out, looking at butterflies, or hanging out with smelling the flowers and saying "Peace Man" and stuff. Like, what else are you gonna do? You know, I don't know. Uh, so that was like uh, one of the strategies that I used. Um, I don't know how successful it was. 
In fact, I don't really have a platform to share this stuff except for this. So uh, these are a bunch of, uh, of um, uh, my friends just kind of created these here. And uh, you know, before uh, Trump got elected, I was asked by a, uh, a website called The Nib if they would like uh, illustrate something about my experience having a character appropriated uh, by the alt-right and used by Trump and all this stuff. So, uh, you know, I just did this kind of like nightmare scenario of Pepe like slowly morphing into Donald Trump and then into a monster and then uh, being trapped inside the monster's mouth, as you can see, and then uh, the threat of nuclear war and uh, all that stuff. So, uh, you know, some pretty heavy stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, I think Art is supposed to be therapeutic. Um, that's, I think, on, on some level, that's why people do artwork. It's to kind of like work through this kind of stuff. So uh, I was feeling uh, a little helpless and, you know, just kind of illustrating uh, my anxieties at, at the time. Um, and then Trump got elected and stuff, and uh, I, you know, I just felt kind of that stuff kind of got out of control. So I ended up. Um, uh, you know, killing Pepe and uh, laying him to rest and just seeing if that would do something. <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm not sure, uh, you know, I think it's just death in general is a tough thing for us to think about. And, uh, you know, killing a, a, a character, um, it, you know, it was kind of my sole response to the controversy. Like, how can I, you know, what, what can I do in this situation? So this was one strategy that I used. Um, another strategy that I used was uh, to, um, you know, I, I started to save Pepe campaign because I wanted to save symbolic frogs. Uh, but I was also, you know, I'm into kind of environmental stuff. So I wanted to save actual frogs too. So um, I uh, started like a t-shirt thing with the Save the Frogs, which was a nonprofit organization. Um, to, uh, uh, you know, to actually about uh, saving frog habitats and stuff like that. So 100% um, of the proceeds from this, this was a threadless um, t-shirt thing. You know, I just wanted to like take it out of the weird context it was in and try to actually save actual frogs because um, one of the reasons that I used Pepe was because he was kind of like a neutral character. I feel like a lot of people could relate to it because it was like a frog and then having it be wrapped up into like this weird uh, racist Nazi agenda like was it just totally came out of left field so I um, uh, wanted to talk about frogs too I don't know um, so you know I'm I'm from Ohio originally and uh, you know I got the, I've got kind of a hard-working Ohio work ethic and you know I just I just do do what I do, and I, and I try to do it daily, and I try to work really hard. Um, so, uh, you know, things would come through, the, through my email, and I would just do them. Like, I got approached by Mad Magazine to do a little frog in front of a swamp. And then, again, the nib uh, wanted me to do another Pepe comic, and, and this time I did an explainer. And, you know, I just didn't really try to explain anything and tried to... <laughs> because uh, I don't have any answers. I, you know, I'm just trying to like deepen the mystery or something, I, or, or like, you know, transcend this stuff somehow, which is what I, what I normally do. I'm not like a political uh, artist. I'm kind of like a kid and an escapist. Like I'd rather draw pictures of dragons than like talk about political stuff. But this has given me an opportunity to kind of face what's going on through the appropriation of my own character and, and like really kind of engage more with like, I don't know, weird political stuff. Um, so another thing that I did, I started a Kickstarter campaign with my brother Jason and uh, we did a Pepe Now zine. And uh, you know, we were, it was a successful campaign. We made a zine, we made stickers and uh, buttons and stuff like that. and. Uh, we, uh, our goal was to resurrect Pepe the Frog because I killed him, but we wanted to like bring him back to life and like uh, uh, instill some more hope in, into the situation. Um, so it, 
weirdly, I just, you know, I didn't want to like do political stuff, so like I uh, just made like a weird activity book out of it. Um, you know, there's like mazes and pictures you can color in and give them a slogan, and uh, you know, that's him as a little tadpole, and then he's old. And, uh, I don't know. I, my my reaction to uh, to life in general has always been kind of surrealist or absurd, so I'm just like doing whatever comes naturally to me uh, with that. And uh, so the way that he comes back alive is, uh, it, it turns out it was like just a fever dream. Uh, he was at a rave, raving with his friends, like, you know, listening to techno music. And, uh, you know, he didn't, he was dehydrated, he passed out, he hallucinated that he was dead, and then his friends are like, hey, he's alive, man, let's get you some water, Pepe, and then like, you know, that, uh, that was my solution to, <laughs> to him dying. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, a lot of the other pages in the book were, were kind of, I was kind of researching like uh, the happy hardcore scene in the early 90s of like rave culture. And, uh, you know, just like uh, focusing on like this kind of hardcore happiness, you know, like, because. Like, you gotta get hardcore happy in, in these times, man. You gotta like really focus on the yin-yang frisbees and the smiley faces and just the, just the positive vibes because otherwise you're just kind of trapped in your own kind of like, I don't know, trapped in your own mind or trapped in your, these, these weird narratives that are being projected into the world right now. So like, you gotta just be like, I'm happy mother effers, you know? Uh, so, I don't know. Um, so, <laughs> I, I try to stay positive, you know. Uh, I always try to maintain a positive mental attitude, but to be honest, like, the whole thing kind of got heavy and I, and I got kind of depressed. Um, I wasn't, like, uh, creating as much as I, I would have liked to. Um, couldn't get off my couch. And uh, uh, somebody sent me this, like, the day Trump was elected. Uh, that was on the cover of the OC Weekly. It was like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, Trump, Pepe on there. And I uh, thought it was kind of funny, but also deeply disturbing. <laughs> like, well, what the hell's going on? Like, this stone frog character that I made like, uh, is now like a shorthand for this weird new creepy movement that's going on. Um, and then, yeah, this other picture, it's just like, uh, uh, you know, people were kind of sending me Save Pepe stuff. So I, I've gotten trolled. You know, and uh, I think this is actually kind of funny. So I, I don't take it personally, uh, even though I'm having my head decapitated. But uh, it is what it is. What it is, right? Um, so you know, I'm just like uh, just dealing with all this stuff and, and, and kind of sad and be, being kind of unproductive. Um, so like, uh, finally, my wife Ayana. Um, this, uh, she used the internet uh, for a good, uh, a good way, and uh, she, she, you know, instead of like a bad way that I was used to the internet being, and uh, she reached out to her friends on Facebook and was like, "Hey, Matt needs help. He needs like a, law, a lawyer or something to like s stop this kids book from being made." Um, like I was just trying to not deal with it too much and try to like be positive and stuff, but, but you know. In my heart, it was it, it, things were getting kind of heavy, and, I, and especially with this, because I've done a I've done a kids book like this. This little frog on a bike is from a kids book that I did. Uh, anyways, um, so like uh, this dude was making this Islamophobic kids book with with Pepe in it, and, and I was able to get a law firm to to represent me pro bono to get him to stop that, and and uh, we uh, donated all the profits to the center of. Uh, uh, Council on American Islamic Relations, and that was like a big win for me. And I was like, "Oh, cool! Like, uh, I can like I can do something about this now because I have this like billion-dollar law firm behind me now, and like they are continuing to help me. And it's rad. They're like, uh, you know, they're working really hard in, in copyright law to uh, aggressively pursue um, any of these kind of like uh, people that are using Pepe as an identifier for this like alt-right agenda or whatever, and just like uh, hitting them where it hurts in their wallet. And, and every time so far, we, we've been able to um, 
you know, cease and desist and, and stop all these people from like using Pepe in ways that uh, are not, not appropriate. Um, so, you know, uh, all the cheesy stuff is kind of true, like um, that people say, like, I, I've realized you, you have to be the change you want to see in the world, and I always look on the bright side and, and do all this stuff. So, so um, follow your bliss, you know? Uh, but also, like, free legal counsel is, like, <laughs> pretty... <laughs> Like, that's a, that's a very bright side to this situation. So, um, so the interesting thing about, about my story is that we, we've been, uh, we've been I, I've been able to kind of turn this uh, Pepe thing into like a, a positive thing where it's kind of this Trojan horse now, where it kind of infiltrates, um, you know, whatever kind of like weird alt-right agenda, people are trying to use it, and then if they're trying to profit from it or use it to represent some some website or something, we can go in and, and sue them and, and get them to stop doing what they're doing. So it's actually turned out to be pretty sweet. And, uh, you know, and I appreciate, like, being able to come out here and talk to you guys about my story and stuff. Like, this wouldn't have happened if shit didn't hit the fan, <laughs> you know? So, like, uh, it's, been a, it's been a positive experience for the most part. And uh, I'm going to continue just, like, uh, trying to... Uh, you know, turn Pepe into a, like, uh, 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 a loving rave baby full of love and joy. So, uh, that's it. <laughs>